Jonathan Banks, Darius Slay, both for Dan Mullen last season. NFL caliber corners. They were both second round draft choices and are both going to play big parts for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Detroit Lions respectively. And that will be a big challenge for Mullen's defense against Rod. Always a near impossible offense to stop run by Mike Gundy. Yeah, he's he's got a system that's been in place ever since Dana Hogerson installed it before moving over to West Virginia. And Mississippi State will have to deal with that up-tempo attack. The Cowboys and Bulldogs are ready. And the Advocare kickoff classic is underway. Damian Lewis from the four. Runs into a wall and barely reaches the 20-yard line. So Tyler Russell will go up against this Oklahoma State defense. He begins his senior season as already a multiple record holder for Mississippi State at quarterback. As last year, he set a new record in passing yards, touchdowns, a total offense record as well. Had a terrific junior year. Now, though, has lost a lot of his wide receiver production as a senior. You think he's got a chance to be one of the best quarterbacks Everett, Mississippi State. I mean, if he has the kind of season this year, like he had last year, maybe he becomes the guy instead of maybe someone like Wayne Matkins. They'll start on the ground with Perkins. And he picks up about two and a half. Jimmy Bean there to make the stop for the Cowboys. And Ladarius Perkins, last season, caught 19 balls. He's the leading returning receiver for Mississippi State, obviously, as well as their number one rush threat. Well, yeah, they don't have an awful lot of experience outside. And he's an all-around guy. I like the fact that you don't have to take him off the field. He can catch the ball, and that may be critical tonight. Out of the pistol, it's Russell to throw for the first time. Over the middle, he has a connection. All the way out to the 35, near the 38-yard line. Back up tight end, Brandon Hill makes his first reception of the season. That's a gain of 15. And so where do they go? They go to the tight end right off the bat. A little confidence, get things going, because you look at the outside receivers, not a lot of production coming back, a lot of inexperience. Robert Johnson last season had 17 catches. Joe Morrow only five as a redshirt freshman. And Jamion Lewis, for the most part, has been a return man. Draw play and losing his footing and going down is Perkins. He lost about a yard and a half. It'll be second down and long now for the Bulldogs. Well, this is kind of the situation that Oklahoma State wants. First down is critical. They don't want to have second and six, second and three, second and five. They have to avoid that. They want to get off the field. They don't want to play a lot of plays. They want their offense on the field with the football. Out of the shotgun now on second down and long, Tyler Russell. Counter handoff, not much there for the Darius Perkins. Ryan Simmons now this getting is his first career spot. start at linebacker. Sweet spot for Oklahoma State. Now they get to bring pass rushers onto the field. They get a chance to turn loose. Now, the last couple of years, they haven't been incredibly aggressive on third down. I expect them to be more aggressive this year. Glenn Spencer, new defensive coordinator. Here they come with the change. You see the switch. How does Russell handle the pressure on third down? Already down to 10 on the play clock as Russell spreads the field. He might have to hustle to get this play off. And he's clapping his hands. Asking for the ball, down to one, just barely gets third down and long off. Russell well protected, over the middle, and he's got a first down. Damian Lewis in plus territory. A gain of 13. Great protection. That allows him a fresh set of downs. Now, we talked about the tempo offense for Oklahoma State. Well, Mississippi State's game plan is to eat up the clock call plays to stay on the field and keep that offense of Oklahoma State off the field and frustrate them. Pardon me, that was Malcolm Johnson on that last catch. So the two big catches so far for Mississippi State by their tight ends. And they're in plus territory. Sixth play of the drive. Play action. Russell to the outside. That's the freshman, Deronye Wilson. 
And he's close to another first down. It looks as if he may have a first down as we take a look at our impact players brought to you by Chick fil A. Well, you started by looking at Mississippi State. Gabe Jackson may be the best offensive guard in the SEC. He's an NFL guy. Bernardrick McKinney in linebacker is going to have his hands full stopping the rushing attack of Oklahoma State. Jeremy Smith could be the seventh straight 100-yard rusher, and Calvin Barnett has his hands full on that up front line dealing with that offensive line of Mississippi State. Russell on a designed rollout. He's got some room to run. He'll tuck it under. And as he goes into a slide, takes a big hit at the 36-yard line from Shamil Gary. Yeah, and, and the thing you worry about is whether there was contact up high. You know, he's a ball carrier who went into a slide, but I think he got hit up high. And I think that's what the officials are talking about right now. Does he get hit high? Well, he did the slide, and it looked like maybe the shoulder got him up high, but I think the benefit of doubt is going to the defense there because of the slide. There is a flag down, so the officials yeah. have flagged the play. We'll have to check the penalty, and that might be kind of the, yeah. the debate going on between the officials now well, as to whether or not that flag's warranted. Yeah, I, I don't believe that you had a guy measuring up the quarterback. I mean, when you see a guy target and go after him, he measures him up, you know, then you ought to flag him. There is no foul on the play. The contact was inadvertent. Yeah, he, he didn't measure him up and try and hit him in the head or uh, upper shoulders. He just comes over to make the play. Now watch this. There's a slide. He doesn't lead with his head. He was trying to wrap up, and he wasn't targeting. And Gundy's absolutely right. That's a good job by the officiating crew. And we'll keep our eyes on Tyler Russell as he was slow to get up and took a pretty good shot to the head, still in the game on second and seven. Check down to a wide open Darius Perkins. All kinds of room. Leaps into the red zone. And it's another first down for Mississippi State. 17-yard pickup. We talked about his ability to catch the ball out of the back though. Watch the nifty move to get outside. Little chip there to slow down the pass rush, and now he's available. That's excellent play from your running back. Hey, shoe. Clock. Tick, tick, tick. Oklahoma State's offense not touching the ball for almost five minutes. All right, now, Mike Gundy's attack is exactly where Dan Mullen wants them to be, watching. Russell, he'll take a shot. And that is almost intercepted. Shamil Gary cut underneath and had it right in his hands. As Tyler Russell, did he telegraph that one a bit? It was late. Go ahead and throw him open. You don't have to put it right up. Lead him to the end zone. You've got him. Just lead him to the S on Mississippi State. you got a touchdown. Well, got a lot of S's to choose from. <laughs> <laughs> Any one of them would have worked. <laughs> Second down and 10 at the 19-yard line. Jamie on Lewis is in the slot right. A couple of tight ends for Tyler Russell as well. He'll line up again in the pistol. So we've seen him under center in the pistol and in the shotgun on this opening drive. Here goes Perkins looking for some room. And he gets cut down at about the 16-yard line, a gain of three. So here's a big early play in the red zone. Third down and seven trying to keep the drive alive. Well, you need points and you need touchdowns. One of the things Mullen said was, hey, we can't settle for field goals against this team. Well, here you are. You got a big third down. You want to come away with seven. Making the play clock down inside of 10 once again as Russell gets his team set. Third and seven, the 11th play of the drive. Calls the ball and has to call for timeout. That time they milked the play clock down a little too far. Did he get the timeout called before the clock went to zero? It looks like he did. So we'll step aside. Mississippi State. We'll have to wait just a moment longer before a big third and seven early here in Houston. You're watching college football on ESPN. On the toss, took the ball, and they've marched down inside the 20-yard line of Oklahoma State. Dan Mullen's team with a nearly six-minute drive to start off. This is the 11th play after the timeout, third down and seven. 
Russell swings one wide open. Perkins blockers out in front. Inside the 10. Flag down. And he's very close to a first down. Shamil Gary came up and cut down Ladarius Perkins at about the 8. Holding offense number 16. That's Joe Morrow, the wide receiver, out on the edge trying to block for Ladarius Perkins. It's a spot foul, so now they'll take the 10 yards off of where the holding penalty occurred. A moment ago, it was third and seven. Now it looks like, Rod, it'll be about third down and 14. Well, now you have the risk of a sack that might even push you out of field goal range. So Russell's got to be careful and aware of that situation if he throws the ball here. The clock keeps rolling down under nine minutes to go already here in the first quarter. Oklahoma State shows blitz on third and long. They'll rush five. Russell dancing away from a sack, floats one, and throws it away. Simply threw it over the head of Jamie on Lewis. Sam Wren got some pressure on Tyler Russell. So, Oklahoma State gets the stop in the red zone. It will be a field goal attempt for the Bulldogs. Well, and credit Russell with a smart play. I mean, he saved the field goal possibility. If he doesn't throw that ball away, they take a sack, they're out of field goal. 40-yard field goal attempt to try and get Mississippi State on the board. Devin Bell had a terrific freshman year. Set a Bulldog record for points by a kicker with 85 points. 14 of 21 last season. And he is good on his first attempt this season. So Oklahoma State's defense bends, but they do not break. They get a red zone stop, and Mississippi State has to settle for a field goal as Devin Bell knocks it through. And the Advocare Texas kickoff starts with a Mississippi State lead. How frustrating do you think it was for Chelp to sit there and watch that drive take so long? Well, Mike Gundy knows the recipe for success for his team is maximum snaps. And you can't get maximum snaps offensively if the opposition is putting together six, seven-minute drives very well executed for Mississippi State, although they did settle for only a field goal. So now the Cowboys get their first chance. Justin Gilbert inside the four. Hurdles a man, and he's out of bounds just shy of the 25-yard line. We know we will see both quarterbacks at some point, but it will be Clint Shelf who will begin for Oklahoma State. And what a story he was last year. They nicknamed him the Chelf Choo Choo because he kept the train on the tracks. He began the year behind not only J.W. Walsh, but Wes Lunt on the depth chart. Third string quarterback to begin the year ends up starting the final five games of the season, played in eight games, and was terrific. The MVP of the ball game, and he starts opening day now against Mississippi State. And he'll throw on first down. Comes underneath and finds Tracy Moore for a gain of about five. You know, watching Chelf on tape, it, it jumps out at you that he's a good quality passer. I mean, timing, touch, accuracy, not the most athletic, but he gets the ball out on time and where the receiver can do something with it after he catches it. They mark Moore out after a gain of only three. Low throw, and Chelf now facing third down and seven as he pulled the string a little bit on that one. Now what I said about accuracy and what I forget about it now. <laughs> well, J.W. Walsh, we know, is going to get his chance as well. And we will see when Mike Gundy and the new offensive coordinator, Mike Yersich, pull the trigger on changing quarterbacks. But already it's third down and long for the Cowboys. A little toss to the edge to Jeremy Smith, right at the first down marker. D. Harrington came up and laid a heavy lick on Jeremy Smith. We'll have to see where they spot the football. It looks like it's going to be fourth down. Yeah, they're about a yard short here. Unusual to see them go to an option kind of game with Chelsea quarterback, but they're short here. Now, spin this forward. You go three and out after being on the sideline for six minutes and 22 seconds while Mississippi State went down the field. 
That is not good. I mean, this is falling in Mississippi State's lap in, lap in terms of planning this game right now. High spiraling kick from Kip Smith. Chases Jamie on Lewis back inside the 15. And he will go no further. So field position now on the side of the Cowboys, but Mississippi State has the football back, and with only two races left until the chase for the cup, Jimmy Johnson looks to maintain his lead on the field. The competition heats up at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta tomorrow night, 7 p.m. on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. You're not going to watch. You're going to leave it. I mean, I, I watch. You're not going to watch. Are you? I will I'll be call glued. You. Okay. I'm, I'm going to test want? you. I want a conference call between you okay. and me during We're that in. entire race. We're in. Not a problem for me. <laughs> so the recipe could not be much better for Dan Mullen's team. Back on the field after a long opening drive. And they start on the ground with Darius Perkins, and he's slipping through tackler's arms. Gets to the edge. All the way out to the 35-yard line. Kevin Peterson missed the tackle for what turns out to be a 19-yard game. See, one of the issues with the up-tempo offense is that your defense tends to play a lot more plays, and that can be a problem. Yeah. Perkins breaks to the outside, puts it done nicely. But think about that defense. I mean, last year, Oklahoma State's defense played 200 more snaps than Alabama's defense. They played 900 more snaps over the last four years in Alabama. And that's more time on the field. You're not going to be as good. Another cutback by Perkins. He's loose again. The recipe for the Bulldogs could not be any better. 22 more yards on the ground. When you have Gabe Jackson, one of the best offensive linemen in the SEC, up front, 61, leading the way for you. Watch him. He just pushes down that left side. Perkins reads it, gets a nice cutback. And Gabe Jackson, NFL Sundays, guaranteed. Only question is, how high does he go in the draft? Ladarius Perkins already with six carries for 47 yards behind Gabe Jackson and that big offensive line. There he is again. And this time, not much there. He made him a couple. Caleb Levy came up to make the stop. And now you need that senior leadership from Levy and Sean Lewis, those two veteran linebackers for Oklahoma State to tighten up this defense. Well, some want to. I mean, you talk about Gabe Jackson pulling from left to right. He's 6'4", 335 pounds, and can move. They pull him and run behind him all the time. Second down and eight. Perkins again makes a man miss off the line. Nifty little run for about five more yards. Now it's third down and three. <laughs> Do you see who was in front of him? Gabe Jackson. <laughs> I mean, imagine you're a linebacker, and you got 335 pounds coming at you with a full head of steam. That, that's, that takes a lot of courage. Well, Gabe Jackson was a preseason first-team All-SEC selection at guard, and he looks every bit like a first-team All-SEC player on these first couple of drives. But here's a chance for Oklahoma State to get a stop. Third down and three. And Mississippi State not in field goal range yet. Russell floats one slowly out to the edge, and it's intercepted. Off the tip. Lindell Johnson came up and hit Ladarius Perkins, and that allowed Justin Gilbert to get the pick off the deflection as Russell kind of lazily threw that one out there and hung Ladarius Perkins out the drive. Yeah, that's a very, very poor throw. You can't hang that up there out there in the flat. Only bad things will happen. Gilbert made a great play, and Oklahoma State is in good field position. Did he have control? Or not, Justin Gilbert had complete possession of the football before stepping out of bounds. There's no question that that last step right up against the sideline, he's out. So, Rod Gilmore, I'll let you be the judge. Does well, he have complete control wait, before stepping out? You have to have indisputable evidence to overturn the call on the field. The call on the field is it was a catch. And there was nothing in that view to show you that it was clearly not control of possession. And it looks as if that was the decision from the replay booth while we were away. So, it is a turnover. And here's Jelf on first down. Out to the edge to Charlie Moore. A pickup of close to seven yards. Uh, here goes the hurry-up tempo. Here goes the pace. 
Mississippi State trying to hustle to get set defensively, and they jump off sides. A little misdirection play as well, but this is going to be a first down for Oklahoma State as it looked like the Bulldogs jumped in the neutral zone. Offside, defense, number 90, five-yard penalty, repeat second down. So Danico Autry was trying to get off quickly on the snap. And he got caught in no man's land. It is a first down for Oklahoma State. And we've got terrific games coming up this afternoon, not only on ESPN, but ABC later on tonight. Can Virginia Tech hang with Alabama in Atlanta? And then tonight in Clemson, what an atmosphere that'll be. Here's the screen. Chelk pulls the screen. It'll be second down and 10 near midfield. And that time, Danico Autry got right in the face of Clint Chelk. Well, this is something Mississippi State didn't have last year, a pass rush from up front. Only 19 sacks all season. Autry brings the pressure that time. Second year, now a senior at Mississippi State for Danico Autry. He was a Juco All-American in 2011. Had a great junior season. Low throw for maybe a yard. Charlie Moore scoops up that attempt from Clint Shelf. It'll be third down and long. You know, that set, that formation, three receivers on one side, a single receiver on the other side, that is the most dangerous formation for Oklahoma State. They can do so much. They force you to declare if you're going to play man-to-man -man on that single side and what you're going to do on the other side, and then they choose where they want to go. Shelf on third down and nine. Well protected, only a three-man rush. Underneath, it's fought for, bobbled around, and it's incomplete. Marcel Aitman, the true freshman, was the intended receiver, but Jay Hughes was right in front of him. Oh, no, yeah, Hughes still looked like the intended receiver there. Watch Jay Hughes, number three, right in front. There's the ball right to him. They were trying to go up high and get the ball to the freshman, Aitman, but Hughes was right in front. That's not a good throw at all. And Jay Hughes is hurt. I'm not sure if it was on the landing. He immediately started to grab the back of his right heel or whether he was stepped on by Marcel Aitman, but junior starting strong safety Jay Hughes, who was right in front of the pass thrown by Clint Shelf, is now down, and the training staff is out there. It'll be fourth down and nine, and again, big picture, Rod. Good job by Mississippi State getting off the field on defense. They're about to get the football back, and for Oklahoma State, I mean, they really suffered no statistical drop-off at all when Brandon Whedon left. They bring in the three-headed quarterback battle with Wes Lunt, who's now at Illinois, Clint Shelf, J.W. Walsh. They were still last year nationally third in scoring, fourth in total offense, seventh in passing offense, but they are in no way in a rhythm to start off this game. No, and part of that has to do with the Mississippi State offense, but you look at what they had last year. Now, Lunt transferred. And he was a starter at one point. All these guys started at some point last season. And then the Bruhaha began, began this offseason as we see the punt now on the fourth down. And hops out of bounds inside the 20 as it really looked like Jay Hughes was shaken up as they had to help him off the field. Let's go back and get a scoring update in the studio with Robert Flores. All right, Bob, remember, with Everett Golson suspended for Notre Dame this season, Tommy Reese is the man, and he started quickly against Temple. Three for three, 115 yards, and two touchdown passes. Irish leading 14-0 first quarter over Temple in South Bend. Bob. All right, Robert, thanks very much here in Houston. It's the Advocare Texas kickoff, Mississippi State. Only a 3-0 lead, but they have controlled things so far. Ladarius Perkins got off to a terrific start. He gets a rest to begin this drive. Josh Robinson to the right of Russell. And Russell off a play action fake wants to throw. Long to the sideline. He's got Jimmy and Lewis. First down and more. Close to the 35-yard line before Lewis goes out. And a first down passing has been critical to what they've done here. They've controlled the ball. Throwing the ball on first down to get a first down and then running the ball. Look at that. Almost nine minutes of ball control. Oklahoma State has hardly been on the field. Only seven plays.
Room for Robinson. He's into the secondary. Close to 10 yards. Right at the 45-yard line. That could be good for another first down, and it is for Mississippi State. SEC power football. I mean, it's what it's built on. I mean, the Big 12 defenses, they don't send, they don't see a lot of this stuff. But up close, power, run right at you. And now a little tempo change for Mississippi State. They go hurry up, and Robinson tripped over the left leg of Charles Sidaway, his right tackle, and he loses a couple of yards. There's Glenn Spencer trying to dial up what he can, defensive coordinator for the Cowboys. Well, but the limitation you have during the offseason is your roster isn't built to practice against a team like this. So you're getting your first real look right now against power football coming right at you. Mississippi State has owned the line of scrimmage so far. Play clock down inside of five. Second down and long. Trying to turn the corner is Robinson. And he picks up three or four yards. It will be third down and long. Caleb Levy and Emmanuel Ogba combine on the tackle for Oklahoma State. Now, we got a long way to go in this ball game, but, but just consider this for a moment. The Big 12 this weekend, you know, Kansas State being knocked off by North Dakota State, and now you've got Mississippi State middle of the road, middle of the pack in the SEC. Oklahoma State's supposed to be maybe the front runner in the Big 12. Kind of having it handed to him right now, at least in terms of controlling the game. Big play here. Third down and seven. Russell. Well protected from a four-man rush. Throws it behind Jamie and Lewis. A bad pass from Tyler Russell. He leads Lewis. It's a first down. Instead, Mississippi State's going to have to kick it away. And Dan Mullen looking up at the giant boards here knows that his team missed a chance. Now, they last year were the best punt team in all of college football. Yeah, last well, season, allowing only six total return yards. Here's Baker Swedenberg out to kick it away. And who coaches that punt team? Dan Mullen. Angling one to the far right corner. And does it stay inbounds and go in the end zone, or did it go out of bounds? It somehow stayed inbounds and went into the end zone for a touchback. How close did Baker Swedenberg come from pinning Oklahoma State inside their own three-yard line? This is a bad bounce for the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah. Uh, you figure that one goes out of bounds. You pin them back there. Ah, uh, but it's not a round ball. Wow. You never know which way it's going to bounce. That's a 66-yarder. So now let's check and see if there's a quarterback switch early on from Oklahoma State. Are we going to get a look now at J.W. Walsh? And we will. So on the third possession, Mike Gundy and Mike Yersich make the quarterback switch. Clint Shelf not productive. Here's J.W. Walsh with that diamond formation in the backfield. And he'll try to turn the corner on a keeper. Across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Gain of six. Charlie Moore out there helping pave the way for J.W. Walsh. It's second down and four. Well, you see the difference right off the bat. You see the athleticism at quarterback. Walsh the other way. He's got a first down. And a flag down late. Thrown from the secondary. Illegal block in the back. Offense, number 81. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That's a redshirt freshman, Jawan Seals, called for the penalty. He'll be to the left side of the screen. Watch him right there. He comes in from behind and just gets a big backside block on Jamerson Love. So that penalty backs Oklahoma State up into second down and eight. So here's that three-by-one formation. And they sprint Jeremy Smith out to the wide side and set up the screen. Well defended as Tevez Calhoun came up to make the stop after a gain of only a couple. So it'll be third down and a long four as we take a look at J.W. Walsh 
last season, named the Big 12 Freshman of the Year. He had seven rushing touchdowns to go along with 13 passing touchdowns. So you're right, it is a different type of offense when he's in there than the one engineered by Chelp. Yeah, he takes care of the ball. He doesn't have as strong of an arm as Chelp. Not the same timing, but he can make the long throw. Running left, Desmond Rowland. He's got a first down and then some. Runs over a man at the 40-yard line as well. Well disguised by Oklahoma State. 16 yards at a first down. Well, Walsh gives you this dimension. You can change your offense. You now have the threat of option. You have the threat of design runs with the quarterback. So it changes up this spread attack. Screen thrown to Stewart. And he's going to lose a couple of yards. Can tackle back inside the 40-yard line. Matthew Wells got there first for the Bulldogs. Uh, Jeff Collins, the defensive coordinator at Mississippi State, told us that when Walsh is in the game, they're going to play his legs first and then his arm. They want to force him to throw, and they want to take away his run game. It doesn't look like the Pokes will get another snap off before the end of the first quarter, and they won't. We expected a shootout. It's 3-0 at the end of the first quarter. So the SEC is known for defense and known for ball control and known for physical football. Oklahoma State got a taste of that from Ladarius Perkins here in the first quarter. <laughs> Off the field, how he's doing. Quinn Kesnick is down there, and Quint doesn't look good. Now, the good news is that he's still on the sideline, but I think his face uh, tells the story right now. Right ankle injury, medical staff says his return is questionable, uh, but you look at him, I think it's more doubtful. Insert Kendrick Market, who's their normal nickelback in that safety position. The one downside with Market is height. He's listed at 5'10", but I, I, that's a stretch. A key for Mississippi State to control some of his matchups in the red zone. Yeah, Hughes, as you saw, was very emotional while we were away, and several members of the training staff are coming over to try and console him as we begin the second quarter with an Oklahoma State drop by Tracy Moore. Oklahoma State held the ball in the first quarter for less than four minutes, and Rod Gilmore, they only have two first downs, and now they're faced with third down and 12. Yeah, they are not in rhythm at all. Chelsea did not get the ball moving for them. Walsh has been able to run it a little bit, but now he's facing a third down. He's going to have to throw into the teeth of his own defense right now. Only three down linemen, as it looks like Mississippi State might be playing coverage on third down and 12. They will rush only three. Walsh to the sideline, well incomplete, and there's no chance that that would have gone for a first down had David Glidden even made the catch. So it's another defensive stop for the Bulldogs. You know, the only problem for Mississippi State is that they haven't been able to cash in with the great plan they've had. Only three points, but they've controlled the ball. They've frustrated the Oklahoma State offense. That's worked perfectly for them. And Brogan with a high wobbly kick and a fair catch called for by Lewis. Fields it as he falls inside the 20-yard line. Saturday Night Football begins on ABC, presented by Windows, part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week under the lights in Death Valley. Number eight against number five. Clemson hosts Georgia. Saturday Night Football on ABC. We got Eastern, we got five Pacific. I think, and maybe this is just bias to that atmosphere, I think that Clemson has a team and a quarterback mm -hmm. that are finally primed to win that big signature game that we always talk about that program finding a way to lose. And wow. tonight, they get that so game believe, in game one. You believe. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> I think Clemson's going to get the. Who do you have? <laughs> the Darius Perkins for a gain of two or three. You think Georgia keeps uh, Clemson down you know, tonight? I, I'm, I'm concerned that there's so many new starters on the Georgia defense that that's a problem in communication, trying to deal with the veteran quarterback and veteran receivers. I, I think that's the issue. That's the reason why I would lean towards Clemson in this game. So you believe? All right, fine. <laughs> fine, you got me. <laughs> Second down and six after Perkins was able to grind out four yards on first down. We also expect at some point to see Dak Prescott in the game at quarterback for Mississippi State. It's been all Tyler Russell so far. 
time, nothing there for Perkins. He lost a couple, and now a chance for Oklahoma State to well, get a stop on defense well, third and long. You know, we're seeing some good stuff up front by Tyler Johnson, number 40. He blew that thing up. And, and he's got to bring that. On third down, on second down, they need up front pressure out of that front four. And now they'll go front three in third and long, but that doesn't mean they will not bring pressure. This is a more aggressive style of defense for Oklahoma State. And Russell has been skittish when he's had to get rid of the ball quickly. And they'll run for it. No chance. So conservative play calling by Les Kenning, the offensive coordinator for Mississippi State, as they tried to trap one up the middle of Darius Perkins, and David L. Collins was not fooled. Yeah, that's a little bit of, I don't want to make things tougher on my defense. You know, we've had some trouble in long situations like that. Let's kick it away and let our defense play in a decent spot. Josh Stewart back to receive the punt of Baker Swedenberg. Again, last season, only 13 punts were returned by opponents all year. And now it looks like it might be a false start called against the Bulldogs. There was all kinds of movement. Multiple flags fly. If this penalty is against the Cowboys, obviously, it's still not enough to give Mississippi State a first down. Full start. Offense, number 11. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. And instead, it puts Swedenberg back in a little bit deeper of a hole. Now he'll be kicking from his own five-yard line. Averaged over 41 yards per kick last season, trying to change field position here. He will angle one towards the right sideline. And a fair catch called for. What a good job of changing field position. As Justin Gilbert pulls in a 48-yard punt. Who's the quarterback for Oklahoma State on the next possession? We'll find out when we come back. You're watching college football on ESPN. To this play, we'll talk a little bit about the decision to play both quarterbacks and how it's played out so far. It might be second guessing, but will Mike Gundy be second guessing himself as this game rolls on with Walsh in there now and Shelf on the bench? First and ten. And a handoff to Desmond Rowland up the middle. Now Mike Gundy told us this week that he doesn't like having two quarterbacks. He wants to settle on one or the other at some point. So I guess in an opening game against an SEC defense, a game that really you'd like to win. Is this such a good idea to not let one guy get in there and settle in and get in, into a little bit of a rhythm and choose a quarterback, as he obviously has not? Second down and eight. Play action for Walsh. Up the seam. He's got a completion in the midfield to Tracy Moore. Well, Gundy said both guys deserve the right to play. He, he believes that, and this is an audition. He wants to have his guy by the time they get to the conference. There was a big hit there that was up high. Desmond Rowland lost about a yard and a half, but can you afford an audition against a team that obviously has the ability to Look, beat you? I, I, I'm not a fan of it. He says he's not a fan of it. I think part of this goes back to the West Lunt transfer. I, mean, I think that kind of shook up everything, and, you, and he had to manage the quarterback situation. The last thing he wanted, I think, was for another guy to transfer. After the play was over, personal foul. Offense, number 58, 15-yard penalty. That's a bad mistake by Daniel Koenig, the right tackle, as he costs his team big time. That'll put the Cowboys back inside their own 40, actually but, inside their own 35. But, you know, Wes Lunt was one of the guys who started last season. And then when the competition was tough during the summer, I mean, the spring, he left. And I think that has to rattle you a little bit about how you handle your quarterbacks. And if you tell another guy he doesn't have a shot, maybe he leaves too. Second down and a mile. Second and 26 now for Oklahoma State. They try to set up the screen to Smith. And he is caught. Great lead by Zach Jackson, the sophomore. Wow. Oh, what a play. What athleticism by Jackson just to run by two blockers and make that play. When you talk about an SEC defense and frustrating these, these quarterbacks, the speed, the power, the athleticism. It's kind of on display. Third and 30. And Oklahoma State will play field position. 
Smith after about the 35-yard line, maybe squeezed out across the 35, close to the 37, but a mile short of a first down. He might have lost the football. And Oklahoma State was lucky to maintain possession as now they'll punt it away. The ball popped out, and Oklahoma State somehow found it. As we get another look, and there it is, squirting towards the sideline. Good job by Marcel Aitman, the freshman wide receiver, to jump on top. Lewis calls for a fair catch and lets this bounce behind him. Oh, that's a bad mistake. Uh -huh. That's going to roll all the way yep. down inside the 15, down inside the 10 to about the 9-yard line. 54-yard punt. Dan Mullen's team with only a the sideline for Oklahoma State. We'll see if they make another quarterback change. Maybe they go back to Clint Shelf on the next possession. As right now that meeting of the minds has not produced anything. Only 65 yards of total offense so far for the Cowboys. They've got field position on their side. Mississippi State pinned deep. Russell to throw to the sideline and out to about the 12-yard line. Aronye Wilson makes the catch. Justin Gilbert bumps him out. The best thing going for Oklahoma State is that as poorly as they've played, they're only down three. They're one possession away from getting this thing turned around. It's critical for Mississippi State to get another score, to get a drive, to get something going. And with this drive starting at their own nine-yard line, they've got the long field to go, but second down and short. Run it with Robinson. And he gets pounded at about the 19-yard line by Sean Lewis. 33rd consecutive start for the senior linebacker Sean Lewis and he may have brought down Robinson just shy it is third down and about a foot uh, this will tell you how much confidence Mississippi State has and what they believe about power and the SEC style of play I mean you're playing a big 12 team you think you're the big strong physical team you go get this you well, they, line up and you run it at him and get it. They just added Damian Robinson as an extra offensive lineman on the left-hand side, number 78, 335 pounds. Instead, they'll run up the middle. Nothing there for Tyler Russell. The quarterback keeper ends up losing a couple of yards. A check that Prescott. And as a result, it'll be three downs and out and a punt from inside their own 10-yard line for the Bulldog. And Oklahoma State's defense rising to the occasion, matching toughness. So what has been a defensive battle so far? Mississippi State has moved the ball much more effectively between the 20s, but they only have one field goal on the board. And so far, the Bulldogs pitching a shutout defensively. Josh Stewart back to receive the punt. And again, Swedenberg will try and angle it up the right sideline. And it's another fair catch called for. Another terrific punt. No punt return yards allowed, 49-yard kick, and no return, so Swedenberg changes field position. Oklahoma successful play callers, Larry Fedora, Dana, Hol Dana Holgerson, Todd Munkin, all Rod Gilmore now head coaches, but not an auspicious debut for Mike Yersich, at least so far. And they stay with Walsh at quarterback. Play action, he wants the home run ball. Incomplete. You think, you think Gersich is feeling a little pressure? I mean, here's a guy who went from making $50,000 a year at Shippensburg to hitting the lottery to getting $400,000 a year now for Oklahoma State. And when we talked to him the other day, he said, well, my first thought was I better not screw this up. So I'm sure he's feeling some pressure right now that they've not gotten on the board. Second down and 10, and now an alignment error for the Cowboys. They send Stewart in motion, wheeling to the right. Walsh doesn't look that way, instead checks down to the left. It's Jeremy Smith out of bounds after a gain of five. So now it's third down and five again. You know, before that completion, I think they had seven completions for 21 yards. I mean, that's the Oklahoma State offense in this ballgame. If you're Gundy, you're going, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Third down and closer to six. Five-man rush. Gets to Walsh. And he has to dump it away. The pressure came right up the middle. D. Arrington on a delayed safety blitz right in the face of J.W. Walsh. 
perfectly executed, perfectly timed. Watch the pressure up the middle right after the hole opened up for him. Walsh had no choice. And once again, they get nothing offensively. Five possessions, five punts, and that one barely gotten away by Brogan. Lewis again forced into a fair catch inside his own 15-yard line. As we take a look at our Pacific Life game summary, and so far, at least as far as Oklahoma State is concerned, it is low lights and nothing but offensively. Yeah, they, they've gotten the matchups, but they haven't been able to do anything on the outside. The rushing attack has been the best of the offense, and that hasn't been fantastic. The timing has been off, and a lot of that has to do with the speed and physical nature of the Mississippi State defense. And now what do you do at quarterback if you're Oklahoma State? Do you go back to Clint Shelf, who's basically been on the bench for about the past 30 to 45 minutes of actual time? Tyler Russell gives to Perkins. He's caught behind the line. The defensive struggle continues. Caleb Levy, not fooled a bit, holds the edge and brings down Perkins for a loss of three. How about the way this Oklahoma State defense is hanging in there? And they haven't gotten frustrated by the fact that their offense just isn't getting it done. Another injury. It looks like Larry Stevens, reserve safety, who came up in run support, was at the bottom of the pile, and he's not getting up. And it looks like they're looking at his leg as well. So Larry Stevens, senior from right here in Houston, as he's playing in front of a lot of friends and family, injured on the play. We'll step aside for just a moment. Mississippi State by a field goal. Loses some depth uh, in their defensive backfield. That's Quinn Kesnick. I'm Bob Oshusen with Rod Gilmore up in the booth, and that is tough to see, especially for a guy playing in his hometown. Yeah, it's too bad. So after the injury timeout, second down and 13 for the Bulldogs back at their own 10-yard line. Over the middle, it's Perkins. Great job by Tyler Russell to hang in, take the hit, find Perkins, who's in the open field. Finally caught from behind all the way out at the 42-yard line. Tyler Johnson, a long run to track down the Darius Perkins, a gain of 32. Uh, two nifty things there, Russell buying time and making sure he's able to get the ball away. Nifty job here by him. But what about the individual effort by Perkins? We talked about him being an all-around player. Look at that one-handed grab. And then the speed, quickness, and agility. He's a great, great back. Really underappreciated. It's a terrific senior combination. You've got the patience of the senior quarterback to let the play develop and take the hit. And the senior running back going right where to be. On a keeper, it's Russell. First down. You know, Sue, that first drive for Mississippi State was a 13-play drive. Their next four drives, a total of 16 plays. They need to get it going here. They've had two big plays to give them a little bit more control and field position. And if you want to frustrate Oklahoma State, you get points out of this. You get a touchdown out of it and really start to put pressure on that offense. Well, you said it before. As great as Mississippi State has been at working on the clock, making sure ball control, keeping Oklahoma State's offense off the field, getting them off the field on defense, they still only have three points on the board. So they haven't in any way added to the lead. As Russell will be sacked. That's a big loss. Sean Lewis, who will make the highlight play Every now and then for Oklahoma State comes with the rush and sacks Mississippi State back inside their own 45-yard line. Yeah, this is the more aggressive nature of the Oklahoma State defense. They brought both linebackers on a blitz that time. Both of them wound up getting there, Levy and Lewis. So first and 10 with some momentum after the Russell run becomes second down and 18. Just across the 45, and now a flag down as they've got too many men on the field. Illegal substitution. 12 men on offense is a five-yard penalty. Second down. Now, 
As Mississippi State broke the huddle with a one running back five wide receiver formation something was wrong. Yeah, how about Perkins. He's winning. <laughs> He's beating Oklahoma State by himself there. Look at his yardage. 52 receiving 54 rushing. He's outdone that prolific Oklahoma State offense in both categories. But only three points on the scoreboard. So this is a big drive for Mississippi State if they can find a way to keep it alive before halftime as they continue to wind the clock down and shorten the game. And on second down and 23, it becomes third down and 23. Lindell Johnson, who was a linebacker for most of last season, playing on the strong side, came up and helped out Calvin Barnett on the stop of Ladarius Perkins. Well, you know, Mike Gundy said he really liked this defense, that this is the best defense he's had in his nine years at Oklahoma State. And right now, they're doing a great job of keeping the offense in the game by bending but not breaking against this Mississippi State team. They have to get to the Oklahoma State 36-yard line for a first down. And the Cowboys rush only four. Russell floats one down the sideline, a jump ball that goes out of bounds. So they took a shot at trying to pick up the first down, throwing a deep ball to the sideline. As Jamie and Lewis and Robert Johnson were both there. But it will be fourth down. And Mississippi State continues to change field position and continues to not allow any return yards with the punter ba Baker Swedenberg. Another penalty, and it'll be another false start on the punt unit. False start. Offense, number five. Five-yard penalty, fourth down. They had first down at midfield, somewhere around there. And then they just went backwards, and they had a good drive going. I mean, this is the kind of thing that can swing momentum, you know, if you're, if you're Oklahoma State. Wobbly kick. And in traffic, trying to return it, and doing so for about a yard and a half was Josh Stewart. That was an unnecessary risk. Lucky to hold on to the football. Jamerson Love was there to make the tackle, and Love is hurt. Jamerson Love is one of the starting corners in that inexperienced Mississippi State secondary, and he gets up with a limp, and he's having a hard time getting off the field. He's out there trying to replace Jonathan Banks and Darius Slay. That's a player they can ill afford to lose. College football primetime on ESPN presented by Hampton Hell, Hampton Hotels, part of Dick's Sporting Goods. Kickoff week kicks off with an SEC Big 12 clash tonight. LSU and TCU, a matchup of two top 20 teams. College football primetime on ESPN tonight at 9 Eastern, also live on Watch ESPN. The Big 12 needs to rally after Kansas State got knocked off by North Dakota State. And right now, Oklahoma State, the favorite in the Big 12, struggling behind here with Mississippi State. And then that other big one on tap tonight, TCU taking on SEC's uh, LSU team. And it is still J.W. Walsh at quarterback. So Clint Shelf got the first two possessions in the first quarter and has not been back in. So let's see if Mike Gundy and Mike Gersich are now settling in on Walsh, making this his game. A back run for four yards for Desmond Rowland. Bernardrick McKinney made the tackle. Well, we talked about the matchup outside. You know, Quint made that clear at the beginning of the show. You know, Stewart on one side and Moore on the other side against inexperienced corners. They've got nothing really today. You have to get the ball to Stewart. On the ground again. And that is about a yard shy of a first down for Desmond Rowland. It'll be third down and one. Nico Whitley was there to make the tackle. So the cowbells get louder as Mississippi State has held Oklahoma State to only one for five on third down. And they're trying to get another stop here. Walsh will try and run for it himself. Nice fake, gets to the edge, and there goes J.W. Walsh. Out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. Uh, he got a great block on the edge by Desmond Rowland, 
number 26. Watch that block on the outside. Here comes 26 right there. It's on the edge. That block cut down a safety and gave the corner to Walsh. That is their first big chunk play. And there goes Walsh again. Inside the five, reaching for the pylon. Where do they mark him out? At about the two and a half yard line where it will be first and goal for Oklahoma State. Just like that. Well, when they go to that diamond formation and you run the quarterback, now you've got extra blockers. I mean, you've got a running back who's got enough blockers to take on Mississippi State's would-be tackle. And now Walsh wants a timeout. Timeout, Mississippi State. after having nothing to cheer for, other than the fact that their defense was keeping the game very manageable. Oklahoma State's entire sideline now exploding after one long run by J.W. Walsh. Time now for our Aflac trivia question. Aflac! We are in Houston, and who are the two Oklahoma State head coaches to win a bowl game in the city of Houston? Huh. We'll okay. have the answer coming up. All right. You know the answer? I have a guess. I think I know one. Yeah? I'm sure I know one. I think they're both very well-known names. Well, who are you guessing? Jimmy Johnson, and yeah. I think Les Miles was the one. Jimmy Johnson was suggested. I think Les Miles might be the other. That's my guess. But not Gundy. I don't think so. Hmm. Okay. After the timeout, that same diamond formation that you've been talking about, Rod, how yeah. many options you have out of this formation? Oh, uh, it's a problem. It is such a problem. Walsh, play action. Rolling right. Has a man in the back of the end zone. Flips it at the pylon. It's incomplete. Mm -hmm. Matthew Wells came with pressure, and J.W. Walsh couldn't let it go. That diamond formation makes you pack your defense in to deal with all the running backs in the backfield. But what you don't account for is if the quarterback runs, now they can block all your guys. You've got an extra blocker. And then the other option is, if you pack it in, you've got one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside, which you like. Here it is again. This time it's Walsh. Great take on the keeper. Walks in for the Cowboy touchdown. A first half of nothing but offensive frustration turns into a touchdown drive to give Oklahoma State a lot of momentum back as we close in on halftime. Well, when Mississippi State goes into the locker room, on the whiteboard, they will draw that diamond formation and start talking about adjustments to try and deal with it. It's the only thing that has worked for Oklahoma State in this first half. The point after is good. Six plays, 69 yards, and it was J.W. Walsh with his legs that has now given Oklahoma State the lead. Well, he's auditioning for quarterback, and that athleticism has been the difference so far for Oklahoma State. Touchdowns last season, Big 12 freshman of the year. One of three quarterbacks to start games for Oklahoma State last season comes into today. Part of a two-quarterback battle with Clint Shelf. And so far, Rod Gilmore here in the first half, he has engineered the only touchdown drive for either offense. Well, that last drive, he carried the ball three times and ran for 60 yards. I mean, the Oklahoma State offense has been the option out of that diamond formation with Walsh running the ball. And exactly the fire that you talked about Mississippi State playing with has come back to burn them a bit. That as much as they physically dominated this yep. first half, not putting any more points on the board, but one drive yeah. and the momentum swing. Yeah, and that affects you mentally on the sideline. You knew you had the opportunity in the first half to really put some pressure on them, and then you don't get it done. Now it's up to Mississippi State to see if they engage. Do they accept the challenge? Do they bounce back from what's been an emotional swing right now? Damian Lewis from the goal line. Finds a place. There he goes. Speed trying to track down Jamie and Lewis from behind. Finally, the Cowboys line him up and bring him down at the 34-yard line. Zach Craig might have saved the touchdown. 
Uh, Lewis is decisive here. He sees the hole, he hits it, he doesn't fool around, gets right into it. A couple of great blocks to create that crease. And then great awareness there to protect the football, knowing that he had some guys surrounding him. But that's, that's a momentum changer if you can take advantage of it. And you said exactly what I was thinking. How huge is this possession now, starting with the short field inside the 35-yard line for a Bulldog offense that has only generated three points? You gotta go back to throwing it on first down. They will not be able to. It looked like Tyler Russell may have been ready for a play action fake, but he got tripped up as we check in with Robert Flores. All right, Bob, Taco Bell, Liv Moss moment. Johnny Manziel was trolling everyone so hard today. After sitting the first half because of a suspension, he threw three touchdowns, had a taunting penalty, and even told a Rice player, hey, you're not getting my autograph. And who says young people don't work on their penmanship? <laughs> <laughs> All right, Robert. Oh. Thanks very much. Second down and 13. There are a lot of different ways you can go off that Johnny Manziel comment as Russell fires a strike short of the first down, scooping it up. One of those true freshman wide receivers that Dan Mullen is excited about. Fred Ross for a gain of eight. It'll be third down and a big one coming up now here. Third down and five. And Mississippi State with only one timeout left and over a minute to go. They need to maybe have a little bit more of a sense of urgency yeah, here. Yeah, but this is two down territory for them now. They can't settle for field goals. They have to think about picking this up. And if they don't get it, they have to go for it on fourth down. Letting a lot of time tick off the clock as well. 50 seconds to go. Russell under pressure to the sideline. Should have been intercepted. Flag down as well. Justin Gilbert had a pick six if he holds on to that football. Yeah, he threw it late and off balance to the wide side of the field. Now what do you do if you're Mike Gundy? Do you accept the penalty, which would create another third down, but probably knock Mississippi State out of field goal range, or... Do you decline the penalty, force fourth down, and maybe they give them a chance That's to kick what, it? Yeah, Spencer was asking that, and I would say Holding the way your offense, defense... Number 77, 10-yard penalty, repeat third down. The way your defense is playing, you push them out of field goal range, and you force them to prove they can do something. Now, if you're Dan Mullen and Les Kenning, the offensive coordinator, are you calling a play here just to try to get back in field goal range, or yes. are you actually trying to go for a first down? I think you're, tr you're trying to get in field goal range. I mean, you, your quarterback's had pressure on him. He hasn't been good under pressure. you got to get the ball out and pick up what you can to have an attempt at a field goal. Third down and 15. Tyler Russell, pocket starting to collapse. Dropped ball by Fred Ross. So now if you are Mississippi State, you get neither. The so problem. the Bulldogs get a 66-yard kickoff return. Yeah. And it looks like they'll get nothing out well, of it. Well, here's the problem. They're going to go for it here. Now, if you get nothing out of this, you're giving Oklahoma State an opportunity to get into field position for a field goal with 35 seconds left or so. I mean, they haven't been good enough offensively to think they can pick up a fourth and 15. This might be a first guess. This looks like it might be a terrible decision. And now the play blown dead before Mississippi State can get the snap off. And Oklahoma State calls a timeout. Timeout. You wonder if Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, State is saving Mississippi State from themselves. Now, given an opportunity to talk things over, will Dan Mullen still look to go for it on fourth down? As we have a chance to answer our AFLAC trivia question. Two Oklahoma State head coaches to win a bowl game in Houston. The answer? Did our booth come up with the right names? Ah, yeah. They did. Jimmy yeah. Johnson, Les Jimmy Miles. Johnson. Okay. All the way back to the 1983 Blue Bonnet Bowl. Which no longer exists. Hasn't existed for quite some time. That was always a treat for a 12-year-old on New Year's Eve to watch the Blue Bonnet Bowl. You didn't have to be 12 to watch it, though, right? <laughs> well, <laughs> what I'm saying is when you were 12, yeah. like me, I, I was about to say I didn't have many options on New Year's Eve. When I was 25, I think I had about the same options on New Year's Eve that I had when I was 12. At, at so. least you were consistent. Yeah, it was a lateral move. Well, Mississippi State's still going to go for it here on fourth down. Russell under pressure. They'll be sacked. And now Mike Gundy will call timeout. Yeah, I would think. Yeah. 
Tyler Johnson. Check yeah. out change of possession. You don't even have to call well, a timeout. This is the scenario we talked about. You haven't been good enough on third and long to want to do it on fourth and long. And now you've put your defense in a position where a pass or two, and they may give up three at least. It is a yeah. very curious decision. Now you give, as you said, with 34 seconds and two timeouts to a fast-paced, yeah. maximum snap NASCAR well, offense, yeah. great field position. Yeah, and, and you know, when, when you're not doing it, when you're not that good at it, you can't put your defense in that position. You kick the ball, you go in at halftime, you pat your defense on the back, and you see what you can do in the second half. Well, even if you have a great offense, even if you're the top offense, you're Oregon. What are the percentages of success of picking up a first down on fourth and 15? Is that about a 5% play? And so you go for it, you fail, and now Oklahoma State's near midfield. J.W. Walsh on a draw. And it looks like they'll have to call one of their two timeouts here after a gain of only three. Now it's third down and seven as D. Arrington well, I got a hand on that pass from J.W. Walsh. And maybe Mississippi State will not pay after all for questionable decision. I'm not sure why Oklahoma State didn't spend one of their two timeouts after the run play. They let the clock wind all the way down. Now only 14 seconds left and still with two timeouts. Third down and seven. Only a three-man rush. Walsh over the middle. At the 35-yard line, Josh Stewart makes the catch down to the 32. Well, now you got to call your timeout and get your field goal team in. He thinks that they're good enough to take one more shot at it, one more play to pick up a few more yards. Well, you still have a timeout left. Yep. So, obviously, you do have, yeah. if you run yeah. a quick hitter, a chance to call your timeout and bring your field goal unit out all the same. From right here, now you have a true freshman kicker, Ben Grogan, who was the number one kicking recruit in this state of Texas. He's got a very strong leg, kicked a 56-yarder well, as a senior in high school. From here, you're looking at probably yeah. about a 49-yarder or so. I agree with this. I mean, you worked so hard to get here, and it was a gimme. You didn't have this chance. Why take the risk of something happening? You know you have a chance to kick here. It's a no-brainer. You can't lose anything. You shouldn't be in this position anyway. I agree with this decision. So here's a chance for the true freshman from 49 yards away. With six seconds, as Rod said, why even risk more time coming off the clock to try and steal three points for Oklahoma State? And it's deflected. That's a live ball. A scramble, and now down the sideline, Walker's out in front. Tavez Calhoun at the 25. Tavez Calhoun finally brought down inside the 10. Preston Smith blocked it. Tavez Calhoun found it. And Oklahoma State avoids disaster. A wild end to a low-scoring first half. The Cowboys have a seven, I think, is the way to describe this <laughs> yeah. game so far. And missed opportunities as well. The style of game, you would think, played right into Mississippi State's hands, dominating time of possession, and yet they give up the lead before halftime. Well, they frustrated the Oklahoma State offense by keeping the football, but then they blew their opportunities after the first drive, not really getting anything. And then Oklahoma State, guess what? Their offense sputtered. I mean, their wide receivers, who are the key guys to what they do, Josh Stewart and Tracy Moore, have really been ineffective. Stewart had 101 catches last season. They've not really been able to get the ball to him so far in this ball game. It has, in fact, been the rushing attack, and in particular, the three backs in the backfield, the diamond formation. Well, our royal purple focus on performance are the runs to the left of J.W. Walsh. He had all the chunk plays in the first half for Oklahoma State. Well, the three backs in the backfield, two lead blockers on that option to the left side has really worked. So it's their diamond formation, they call it. It's been effective. It's the one thing that Mississippi State had to work on at halftime to try to figure out how to stop. And you would expect that you're still going to see the two quarterbacks in the second half for Oklahoma State. You think, you think you'll think you see Clint uh, Shelf again? Or I think is this they're game... auditioning. They're still auditioning. 
Gundy said he wants to pick a guy by the time they get to their conference game against West Virginia in the fourth week. Mississippi State won the toss and took the ball to start the game, so it's Oklahoma State's chance to start the second half. Justin Gilbert on the kickoff return. Stood up at about the 25-yard line. Let's take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. And here's the catch 22 for Mississippi State. You dominate time of yeah. possession, 21 minutes to nine, and yeah. yet you're losing. Well, it's been penalties. It's been drop passes. There was the one pick. They had opportunities. They started at midfield. They didn't get it done. You look at Oklahoma State, 46 yards rushing. The pass, uh, 116 rushing, I say. The passing yards, only 46. That is not like an Oklahoma State offense. And it is J.W. Walsh that starts off the second half at quarterback. The only momentum that the Cowboys had on offense was when he was in there. And a straight throw on first down. High throw to Charlie Moore. Pulls it in. That's a gain of about six. Just across the 30-yard line. Called a five-yard gain. Second down and five. Well, Gundy told Quint that he wanted to get rhythm going. And I think that means the passing attack. the middle Jeremy Smith for a yard and by Preston Smith it'll be third down and four Josh Stewart he's in the slot he's your big time receiver and you really haven't used him very much today Last year, Stewart was in the top four in the Big 12 in catches and yards. 101 receptions last season. But on third down, looking the opposite way as Walsh, and he does find Stewart dragging across the middle. And Josh Stewart makes his first real impact play out close to the 45-yard line, a gain of 13, and that's a big early third down conversion. He is such a dynamic player, so underrated, and you have to get him involved. Quick snap, and Smith with a cutback. Out close to midfield. Danico Autry tripped him up. Second down and about six. Here's the rhythm. You complete a pass, you, get, you hurry up. You run the ball, you hurry up. Although the officials are slowing them down a little bit there. A reverse. Josh Stewart trying to turn the corner and Mississippi State ready for it. That's a loss of two. It'll be third down and long. Well, Preston Smith made that play. Walsh actually tried to block him. And I think he thought better of it after the 255-pounder pushed him. Watch to the right side. Watch what happens here. Look at that push. I mean, Preston Smith, 91, just told Walsh, seriously, you want to block me? And D. Arrington stayed home and made the stop for the loss of two. Third down and eight for Oklahoma State. They are 50% so far on third down. They show blitz. Here they come with five to the outside. Leaning into that throw is J.W. Walsh. And he hits Blake Jackson for a gain of nine on third and eight. And Jeremy Smith picked up the blitz on that play. Gave Walsh the time. You know, they're starting to get that flow. Starting to get that rhythm. That might have been the best-looking throw we have yeah. seen out of any of the three quarterbacks. Throw in Russell as well. Agreed. J.W. Walsh spun that one for a first down. Walsh on the keeper. Misdirection. He's got another first down. And boy, he took a heavy hit as he went out. And it might be tacking on another 15 as Tevez Calhoun. Went upstairs on J.W. Walsh right on the sideline. After the play was over, personal foul, late hit, number 23 on the defense, 15-yard penalty, first down. So all in all, that becomes a 26-yard game. Needless hit out of bounds. Doesn't get him above the shoulders. It was underneath the shoulder pad which is why it's not a flagrant foul. That puts Oklahoma State in the red zone as now J.W. Walsh starting to rack up 
total yards in the game with 86 yards rushing of close to 150 total yards. 148 to be exact. And he's got some rhythm. Off a of play action fake. Floating one wide open at the pylon. Does he stay in? Desmond Rowland. Yes! Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Somehow, Desmond Rowland toe tapped and stayed inside the pylon for six. Well, remember all the great blocks that Rowland delivered on that option play? This is the reward for him if he's in bounds. Is he in bounds? There's catch. Oh, he's not in. He's not in. They're trying to hurry up and, and kick the PAT before it gets reviewed, but here comes the whistle. <laughs> the previous play is under further review. The ruling on the field was a touchdown. So while they take a look, we will step aside. The ruling on the field, touchdown. Will it be overturned? Don't go away. The ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. That was the announcement a moment ago. And the difference, of course, here being, rather than going out of bounds, because Desmond Rowland hits the pylon yep. first, yep. That counts as breaking yep. the plane. That's yep. a touchdown. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. Didn't see that on the going to break view, but yeah, clearly there, he's on the pylon. And that's the touchdown. So Over an eight-play, 75-yard touchdown drive. And now J.W. Walsh has some momentum going offensively for Oklahoma State. Well, he used his legs to set up what he could do with his arm. And Rowan made the catch. And again, as we talked about, Rowan's had a great night blocking on that option play that has been the key to Walsh's running. They reward him with the same kind of action, get him out of the backfield, and throw the touchdown pass to him. Further explanation coming. With the replay booth. The receiver's foot hit the pylon. By rule, he's out of bounds. The pass is incomplete. After review, it will be fourth down at the 19-yard line. Oh, so we had it opposite. Whoa. So when he hits the pylon, the ruling is he is out of bounds. The replay booth gave us the wrong explanation. And as a result, that is a third down miss. And Oklahoma State has the touchdown wiped away. Wow. Tough day in the replay booth. And the officials still have to iron out what down and distance we're looking at here because that was a first down play. And I believe I think the referee announced that it was fourth down, but it actually should be second and second down. And there we go. Now Dan Capron has it ironed out. So miscommunication with the replay booth. And also some confusion as to what down it was that that play occurred. It was a first down play. Now they've got it straightened out. And a little life for Mississippi State as it's now second down and 10. Walsh flips the screen. Wide open Jeremy Smith. Dodging tacklers and works his way to about the 15 yard line. That's a gain of three and a half. Yeah, McKinney's speed turned that play back inside. Otherwise, Smith picks up the first down on that, on that catch and run. So now it's third down and a long six. Uh, Mississippi State has had success bringing pressure and keeping Walsh in the pocket. They have to get to the nine-yard line for a first down. Sprint draw to Josh Stewart. Can he turn the corner? He gets a cutback lane at the five. Close to the end zone. Brought down at the one. Patient run on the end around to Josh Stewart on third down. Yeah, that fly sweep. Pre-snap motion across. He just gets to the edge. He is so dynamic and so decisive. And now here you are with a chance to go first and go with a running quarterback. 
Instead, easily into the end zone, it's Jeremy Smith. And after all is said and done, Oklahoma State does get the touchdown, and they've got a two-score lead. How about the fact that it is, it's the rushing attack for Oklahoma State that has picked up the pace, gotten the rhythm, not the passing attack. So it's an 11-play, 75-yard touchdown drive. And now Mississippi State finds themselves in a two-score hole in a game where they have controlled the clock at times, but they've only put three points on the board. 14-3 Cowboys. Well, it was this play. Our wide receiver, Stewart, hasn't caught many passes, but you see his running skills. Gets it inside, sets up the touchdown run by Walsh to Stewart. Eating lunch isn't exactly hard work. Drive with the short touchdown run. Well, they were three of three on third down on that drive, and that was that was really key for the Cowboys. Dick Smith with a pooch kick. That comes to about the 16-yard line to Robert Johnson. And he's able to get out close to the 30-yard line as we go down to Quinn Kesnick. Stop the silly mistakes is what Dan Mullen said in terms of his offense and their inability to sustain drives. Moments ago, he actually got around his offensive line uh, real positive with him. I think he understands the importance of this current drive. The bigger long-term concern for Mississippi State, the health of their secondary. Now playing without two starters on that last drive. Jay Hughes starting strong safety out with an ankle. Jamerson Love done for the day. Cornerback. So you saw Justin Cox and Kendrick Market. Well, offensively, the concern as well, Quint's putting points on the board. And as Tyler Russell finds himself now in an 11-point hole, empty backfield on first down, he'll throw into traffic. Damian Lewis makes the catch for eight yards. Shamil Gary was there to bring him down at the 37-yard line. Well, I think the key for Mississippi State now is not to panic. You know, you don't have to throw it every down to get back into the game. They can, they can mix in the run and the pass. They have to get some rhythm with Russell. They have to protect him. In pressure situations, Oklahoma State's brought the pressure and rattled him. But Darius Perkins behind Tyler Russell has the lone set back out of the pistol on second down and two. And that cutback doesn't get much, maybe a half yard. Ryan Simmons, sophomore first year starter at outside linebacker for Oklahoma State makes the stop. So now another third down coming for Mississippi State. Well, and this Oklahoma State defense has been more physical than I think most people expect. And speaking of physical, now Mississippi State goes with the physical group up front and Dak Prescott at quarterback. Six offensive linemen and the 230-pound sophomore. Prescott, stood up by Caleb Levy. Jimmy Bean there to help on the tackle as well. Well, we've talked about it. This Oklahoma State defense actually slugging it out toe-to-toe, -to -toe, taking on blocks, beating blocks, and making tackles like that. I mean, Levy was there to finish it, but he had some help. Glenn Spencer, first-year defensive coordinator here, loves the way that physical defense showed up on that third and short. And if his defense continues to play well, boy, does it cap a fun summer for Glenn Spencer, married now to our colleague Janine Edwards. And Baker Swedenberg tries to angle a kick that ends up going right down the middle of the field. But a fair catch called for late by Josh Stewart. At about his own 20-yard line, a 42-yard punt. Hopefully he was this happy on his wedding day as well. <laughs> I think but he probably was. He was pretty happy with his defense's performance on third down and two there. They get the three down and out stop. Momentum very much on the side of Oklahoma State now as we welcome you back to Houston. The Advocare Texas kickoff, part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week. Bob Wischusen, Rod Gilmore, and Quinn Kesnick here at Reliance Stadium. J.W. Walsh 
is back on the field after his defense gets him a three downs and out. Oklahoma State has the ball back at their own 20-yard line as Walsh has engineered two touchdown drives in the last three possessions. Here he goes again. Flag down as he steps out of the 28. Personal foul, tripping, offense, number 26, half the distance to the goal, repeat first down. So Desmond Rowland called for a 15-yarder as we check in with Robert Flores. Hey, Bob, check this out on ESPN Alabama and Virginia Tech. After the Hokies go three and out, they punt to Christian Jones, and he goes 74 yards. Just like that, Alabama had a 7-0 lead. Same score, 9-20 in the first quarter on ESPN. All right, Robert, thanks very much. Can Virginia Tech somehow hang in that game with Alabama? Not off to a good start. After a big penalty, J.W. Walsh escapes a sack inside the 10-yard line, finds a receiver underneath. It's David Glidden. And boy, did J.W. Walsh just turn disaster into a gain of 12 yards. Yeah, he, he rightfully should have been sacked inside the five-yard line. Went Houdini after he escaped, after he escaped Brown and then completed the pass down the field. So now they've got something manageable. I mean, you've got second and seven, second and eight after being backed up. Flags down again. Full start. Offense, number 51. Five yard penalty, second down. So now the Cowboys are trying to overcome their own mistakes. So first down, 15-yard penalty. Back to a manageable down and distance, and now not nearly as manageable. Second down and 13 or so after the penalty. You know, I expect them to go back to their diamond formation, the three backs in the backfield on this series. I mean, it hasn't been stopped. Here it is. Once again, they've not been stopped out of this formation. That option play. Second down and a long 12. Play clock winding down. Straight back to throw is Walsh to the sideline. Catch me. The freshman Jawan Seals for a first down. Out to the 32. The beauty of that formation is that it gets you the single coverage on the outside and it gives you the option of running inside. You see the top of your screen. You see the route there run by Seals. Pretty much wide open there. Easy throw for Walsh. And you have to wonder if we're going to see Clint Shelf again at some point in the game. He only played the first seven snaps, replaced by Walsh, and it's been J.W. Walsh's game ever since. Jeremy Smith out of bounds. At the 35, Daniel Koenig was out there to pave the way for Jeremy Smith as we take a look at Clint Shelf, three of six for 11 yards, then replaced, and it's been the dual threat through the air and on the ground for J.W. Well, Walsh ever since. It, it's really been that bottom left number, 88. I mean, rushing yards from the quarterback position. That was the spark for this offense. Another first down. Hits and catch to Tracy Moore. And now the rhythm has built for Oklahoma State. That has to worry you if you're a Mississippi State fan. Well, they've used the rushing attack to set up the passing attack and get Walsh comfortable. And now you're on skates. Trying to turn the corner to the near side of the flag down is Jeremy Smith. This might be holding on Josh Stewart out on the edge. You know. Holding. Offense, number five. Ten yard penalty. Repeat first down. Dick Sporting Goods kickoff week concludes Monday night on ESPN at Heinz Field. Paul Christ and the Pitt Panthers making their ACC debut. And welcome to the ACC. Here comes number 11, Florida State, led by Jimbo Fisher. Into the Steel City, college football on ESPN Monday night at 8 Eastern, also live on Watch ESPN. Davis Winston's going to be a fun player to watch this year for Florida State as well. A lot of hype about him. A lot of hype. Seems like deservingly so. On first down and 20, it's Tracy Moore again. 
And just like that, a gain of 15, it'll be second down and five. Now you can see why Gundy likes Walsh. And that athleticism creates opportunities in the passing game. And right now, the rhythm is there for this offense. Long throw to the outside, on time to Josh Stewart. That's another first down for Oklahoma State. This offense is fun to watch once they get it rolling. And they have it rolling now, and now they're catching Mississippi State in a substitution penalty. Mississippi State tried to sub and couldn't get their players off the field. And at the snap, it looked like they had a 12th player still on the field. Illegal substitution, 12 men on defense, 10-yard penalty results in a first down. Well, see, they started with the 40-second play clock. Look how quickly they get to the line of scrimmage and get set up. I mean, you haven't even had seven seconds go off before they're almost ready, and at 11 seconds, they're snapping the ball. You saw one guy caught not getting off the field from Mississippi State. Play action for Walsh. Here comes a blitz. Avoids the sack. Looking downfield. Dodges a tackle and dives out for maybe another first down, depending on the spot. You see, you don't draw up plays that way. I mean, they drew up the play for him to throw the ball deep down the middle. That's not there. And then he makes all of this happen. He gets outside. Well, J.W. Walsh is 9 of 10 passing this quarter. And now they're mixing things up with the run. Hard yards from Jeremy Smith inside the 30, down to about the 28. That's a gain of five more. And Mississippi State looks like a tired defense. There comes a point in every game where you have the opportunity to break the will of the other team. That's at that point right now for this Mississippi State team in their defense. They're, they're on skates. They're getting pounded. Can they rise up and hold on? If they can't here, they're in big trouble. 11th play of the drive. Walsh with a pump fake. Throws it away. Pressure came from Danico Autry. But now a big play, third down yeah. and five, and what a difference a half makes for J.W. Walsh. Well, you know, running around made him feel good. He's having fun. He got the legs going, and he got the arm going. Huge play here, though, for the Mississippi State defense if they can get a stop on third down and a short five. I'll try and run for it. Very close to a first down. It looks as if Desmond Rowland might be just a little bit short. He is being marked a yard shy. So now what do you do for Oklahoma State? Oh, Keep the ball go. rolling oh, and go for yeah, it? Oh, they, yeah, they, they'll go. I mean, Mike Gundy figured that out a couple years ago. He went for it once on a fourth down, didn't get it. Fourth and one, Walsh on a keeper. Flag down, inside the 20, down to the 18-yard line. It's a first down run if the play stands, but it looks as if this flag may be against Oklahoma State. Yeah, you know, back to the fourth down play, we wait for the call here. Holding. Offense, number five. Ten-yard penalty. Repeat fourth down. Now, Gundy said that if he's got the choice, he would prefer to have the ball in the hands of his offense than his kicker. He would prefer that situation after having been in situations where kickers didn't deliver. But now, look where you are. You're fourth and 11. You take a long shot. No, you had one block. He's going to put the ball in the hands of his offense again. It's a little bit more manageable because it's a spot foul. So it's fourth down and eight. But you're also in no man's land if you don't think you can make the field goal. And you're also, with a defense, looking at only three points on the board for the opposition. So what happens on fourth down? A swing pass caught by Rowland. Strung out. And Mississippi State gets the stop on down. Zach Jackson makes the tackle in the open field. So a little life and a reason to ring the cowbells as Dan Mullen's team stops that drive with no points going up for OSU. This is a momentum-saving tackle. This is a tackle that keeps you in the game. You make this play, and you don't break. Emotionally, you're still in the ballgame. Now, 
your offense that's gone 0 for 8 on third down since the first drive, they've got to come through for you. That's a 14-play drive for Oklahoma State that gets them nothing other than flipping the field. But now it's back to Tyler Russell. Well protected. Tucks it under. He helped to scramble forward to pick up a yard. James Castleman tripped him up, and there's a scramble. Did Russell cough up the football? And if he did, did Oklahoma State get it? The Cowboys think the ball came loose, and it looks like Tyler Russell is hurt. He may have taken a shot to the head. So already Dak Prescott is getting set to come in the game. Let's watch the end of the play here. And it looks like it was the left knee of Simmons, number 52, that caught Russell in the, uh, in the head there. It doesn't look like it's a shot from above, but he misses. It looks like it's the knee or so. The ball came out, but his knee was definitely down with yeah. possession before the ball came out. So Agreed. at least from a football standpoint, it's not a fumble, but a much more significant concern for Mississippi State is the health of Tyler Russell. And not only with an NFL settlement coming down, Rod Gilmore, a host of players, massive lawsuit against the NFL for concussion effects. College football is now taking this issue very, very seriously. And now you've got Tyler Russell obviously taking that shot to the head. Uh, you wonder if he's going to be able to maybe get back in this football game, yeah. but how serious this in injury is. Yeah, well, you know, the concussion issue is, is a huge issue, and the NFL has really had the lead on this, and college football needs a wake-up call on it. I mean, if you think about what's happened, the NFL has changed rules on practice and contact. They've now settled a lawsuit. That's huge. The, the college football still has a lawsuit, a couple lawsuits out there that are issues for them, and they still haven't changed practice rules with respect to contact yet. So that's an issue out there. Mississippi State told us that they had four concussions during fall practice this season. So practice rules matter. Concussions are a big issue. We're still going to have to see college football catch up to the NFL on this issue. Well, for a Mississippi State fan that right now is wondering, is Tyler Russell okay? That's obviously issue number one. But if he comes to the sideline, seems as if he's shaking that shot to the head off, what protocol does he have to go through as far as you know to maybe get back in the game uh, you know who would make that final decision well the medical staff is supposed to administer concussion testing on the sideline and it's supposed to be solely their call as to whether he has an issue and can come back in the ball game players lobby all the time about that now we don't know if Mississippi State has established baseline testing so that they can really discern whether there's a change right now for him or not. But they will do their sideline test and see if there's an issue for him. Assuming he has a concussion, you know, we're, we can play doctor from up here, but we're not down on the field. We don't know exactly what he's saying to them and what he tells them. Well, they do have him sitting up. And who is it? But they have yet to get him up on his feet. So the training staff still around Tyler Russell. And now Dak Prescott starts to warm up. Now, we talked with Les Kenning, the offensive coordinator, about Dak Prescott, who, as a freshman last year, did have a series of plays that he was able to run, some wildcat, mm -hmm. some read option, a package specifically for him. Les Kenning did tell us that they feel as if now Dak Prescott does have the ability to run their entire offense. It's not just a limited selection of plays that they'll be having to manage Prescott through, but much more importantly, the health of Tyler Russell and slowly walking off, wincing in pain. And you never like to see a young man take a headshot like that that clearly now has affected him. Well, he's a senior, he's a veteran player. He, he, it's good to see him walk off the field, but they're gonna walk, work with him on the sideline, check him out, but in the meantime, Prescott's gonna have to run more than a package of plays. I mean, he's the guy right now. Cut back for the Darius Perkins. He lost a yard or two. Ryan Simmons was there to bottle him up. 
So now it will be third down and long. Dak Prescott comes off the bench basically cold. He's been in there a couple of times hey guys, in short quick, yardage situations. Last season as a redshirt freshman, 18 of 29 passing for the entire year for 194 yards. Well, tough situation. Big third down here. He's got to throw the ball to get them the first down. The rushing attack probably won't do it here. And Darius Perkins, seven yards on his last nine carries after a big start. So now it's third down and ten. Prescott on the slant, and had that even been caught, it would not have been a first down. Joe Morrow had it knocked away by Kevin Peterson. He's got a pick. No. Well, Peterson eats this up. Here he is to the top of your screen. Got his hands on him, but he gets his hands off once the ball's in the air. That's a good play. So Baker Swedenberg, who has changed field position today more than once, tries to do it again. Stewart tries to return this one. Gets to the edge. Gets bumped out of bounds at about the 33-yard line. Bernardrick McKinney there to make the stop on special teams. And there is a flag down on the play out near midfield. And another long conference among the officials before we get the announcement. Personal foul, number 23 on the receiving team. 15-yard penalty, first down Oklahoma State. Well, that will back up the Cowboys, as we remind you that later on tonight on ABC, Saturday Night Football, presented by Windows, part of Dick's Sporting Goods Kickoff Week, kicks off under the lights in Death Valley. Number five, Georgia, comes to number eight, Clemson. Saturday Night Football on ABC, eight Eastern, five Pacific, two terrific quarterbacks. Murray and Boyd square off in a game that already has national championship implications possibly on the opening weekend of the 2013 season. Feeling a little Heisman matchup between those two. First and ten. Draw to Jeremy Smith. Gets a block. Across the 30. Breaks a tackle. Stays in bounds and finally at the 39-yard line. Plenty good enough for a first down again of 21. And now heading back to the locker room with a little bit of help is Tyler Russell. And he is still very woozy. And they're going to take him back and get him some x-rays. Wide receiver hitch, Marcel Aitman. Picks up about six more for Oklahoma State. It'll be second down and four. Aitman is a really good-looking receiver. Tall, athletic. We watched him in warm-ups and and he was as impressive as any other receiver except for Josh Stewart for Oklahoma State. Walsh well protected. Long throw to the sideline. Wide open Tracy Moore. Or check that. Charlie Moore. And Charlie Moore it looks as if does have a first down. Got past the sticks right to midfield. So Oklahoma State moves the chains again inside of a minute to go here in the third quarter. has been rolling find some room that's four more yards now keep in mind this defense has not had much of a break in the second half long drives and then right back on the field hurry up offense a lot of pressure on them as there's another player down it's Matthew Wells senior outside linebacker his job this year trying to replace Cameron Lawrence you know, you lose a Cam Lawrence, who last year was third in the SEC as a senior with 120 tackles. And, you know, it's a, a lot of NFL talent that Mississippi State had on this defense last season that they are trying to replace this year. And, boy, it looked like they did a terrific job of it in the first half. They had bottled up Oklahoma State's offense. Yeah, I got you. But ever since that drive for the touchdown right before halftime, Oklahoma State's offense has looked like a different group. Well, but I don't think you can fault the Mississippi State defense. I mean, these guys have played their hearts out, and 14 points to this team heading to the fourth quarter, 
That's more than I think any Mississippi State fan could have hoped for from this defense. They're getting worn down. I mean, their offense has not been able to deliver more than three plays and out. I mean, they've got to pick up some first downs when they have the ball to help the defense. Third quarter, Oklahoma State is about to run their 30th play of the quarter. And Mississippi State has two three and outs. Yeah. They've run six offensive plays. I mean, you can't play good defense at that clip. And when you're on the field all the time like that, it just wears you out physically and emotionally. Desmond rolling on second and six. Picks up another first down. Out of bounds at the Mississippi State 34. And if you're Oklahoma State, there's no reason to hurry up now. I guess if you want to keep the ball rolling, you can. But that could be the final play of the third quarter if you choose not to snap it again. And instead, why not? Keep it going. Roland gets bottled up. This time he loses a yard. Gang tackled. Brought down by P.J. Jones. You know, the bend but don't break has essentially worked for Mississippi State as we get to the end of the third quarter now. Mike Gundy's team very much in control as we head to the fourth. Two touchdown drives engineered by J.W. Walsh, and the rush attack has turned the tide. Oklahoma State with an 11-point lead as we head to the fourth. 216 yards rushing total for Oklahoma State, 100 yards rushing in the third quarter alone. J.W. Walsh has made a difference since coming on a quarterback. And his legs a big reason why, and now jumping offsides. It's Chris Jones. Offside. Defense. <laughs> Five yard penalty. Still you know, second down. The the 14 to 3 lead feels like 28 to 3. And that's because the Mississippi State offense hasn't really been on the field or able to get much done. And this defense is getting worn out. After the penalty, only second down and six. Play action for Walsh. Looking back, has several receivers to choose from and overshoots Josh Stewart. He had Jeremy Smith on a check down on the left flat, wide open, passed him up for the bigger attempt to Josh Stewart and threw it high. Well, he, he held it too long and thought about it too long. Had he not done the one extra hitch and just stepped up and let the ball go, he would have had Stewart a few strides sooner. Third down and six. And Oklahoma State probably not in field goal range yet. So maybe Mississippi State defense can get a stop. Walsh to the edge. Routine inside the 25 and picks up the first down. And was that a nifty, nimble little move by J.W. Walsh? Yeah, big hit by McKinney at the end of that. But it's the same deal. It is the option that has been a problem for Mississippi State, and Walsh picks it up. I mean, he's so athletic back there. He adds that new dimension to this offense. Here's Jeremy Smith bouncing it outside. Turns the corner at the 10. Five walks into the end zone. Touchdown. Another very efficient touchdown drive. Nine plays, 82 yards. Jeremy Smith caps it. And now Mississippi State Rod is in big trouble. Who says that the Big 12 can't play physical football? It's a rush-oriented attack. We've seen a lot of Desmond rolling today as well, but the last five drives key by that run game for Oklahoma State have been productive. A block field goal right towards the end of halftime. They did move into scoring position, but Three touchdowns in their last five drives after five punts on their first five drives. This game is completely flipped, Rod. Yeah, they, they shook off the rust, got into a rhythm, as Mike Gundy talked about at halftime. 
and it was really on the ground. And we expected them to open up the passing attack just enough to run the football, though. So Kip Smith with another kickoff. Jamie and Lewis, two yards deep, brings it out. Tries a cutback and goes down at the 10. Let's go down to Quinn. Bob, I just took a stroll up the uh, tunnel towards the x-ray room uh, and, and out walked Tyler Russell with his parents. Uh, I'm being told by the Mississippi State Athletic Director that the x-rays were negative, and that's good news. Uh, Tyler then walked down towards the locker room. He's done for today. Uh, the doctor in charge was Dr. Alan Seals, uh, who is uh, an orthopedist for, for Mississippi State, also consults with the NFL in terms of their concussion treatment. So uh, he's in good hands right now. It looks like there's no neck uh, issues, and it's just uh, a, a head injury at this stage, and he was walking and coherent with his parents. Well, that is good news, but unfortunately for Mississippi State, they are without their starting quarterback for the rest of what is now a deep hole they have dug themselves to start off the fourth quarter. They've got Dak Prescott out there. That pass intended for Jamie and Lewis on first down. It's second down and 10, and now you have to lean on a sophomore quarterback that only threw the ball 29 times all of last season. More of a Wildcat specialty guy, Rod. And in, in spite of the fact that Les Kenning told us they feel they can run their entire offense with Dak Prescott, this is a tough spot. Facing a pretty tough defense here. Josh Robinson breaking tackles. Hard run for a first down after the 25. Let's go back and take a look again at the hit that Tyler Russell took towards the end of the third quarter that has knocked him out of the rest of the game. A glancing blow from Ryan Simmons with his knee. They were worried, and that's why they did do some x-rays on Tyler Russell, that he might have had a neck injury in addition to maybe having some concussion symptoms as well. But at the very least, the x-rays were negative. There's no broken bone in his neck, but still in all, Tyler Russell out for the rest of today. And now we've got Justin Malone, the right guard for Mississippi State, also shaken up on the last play. So while we have another injury timeout, let's go back to Robert Flores. All right, Bob, update on number one Alabama against Virginia Tech over on ESPN. Tide had a 14-zip lead until Trey Edmonds goes 78 yards for the touchdown, and Alabama just returned an interception, so now it's 20-7 to Alabama with a point after pending. All right, Robert, thanks very much. Boy, that is a big momentum shift. You get a crease for a running back to go over 70 yards for a touchdown, and then you answer Come back with a pick six wait, wait, the next wait, time your wait, offense gets out there? Wait. You're talking like you expect Virginia Tech to hang in there. It doesn't really matter, does it? <laughs> Justin Malone having to be helped <laughs> off the field, so Ben Beckwith, a senior, will take his place at right guard, and Rod Gilmore continues to reign on all of my parades today. No, I was hoping that no, we would have was, a good second half to watch when our game was over. I, I mean, if you got the number one team in the country in a game in the second half. I, I didn't rain on you in the One Direction song. That's true. Yeah. I appreciate that. We, by the way, it's 1D. No, 1D. Get it straight. Yeah. <laughs> that last run, by the way, by Josh Robinson is the first first down in the second half for Mississippi State. Prescott on a keeper. Up the middle. Ran into his own man. Blaine Clausell, the left tackle, who helped bring down Dak Prescott after a gain of about eight yards. Let me ask you this. We've seen the Oklahoma State team over the years. I've not seen a defense from them this physical at all in, in Gundy's entire time. I mean, they're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They were challenged physically about could they hang in there against an SEC team and slug it out. I think they've done more than that. They have done that and then some. You're right. Second down and three. off to Robinson, moves the pile close to the first down. And that may be good enough to move the chains. Anthony Rogers was there to make the stop. I think the point you raised earlier in the game about why some of Oklahoma State's defensive numbers might be skewed somewhat because of the pace of their offense and the conference that they play in, they play so many more snaps per game because the games are shorter. Because even when they go on a six, seven, eight yard, eight play touchdown drive offensively, Sometimes only 90 seconds comes off the clock. The games are longer. There are more plays 
And obviously then more plays means more yards even if you're playing well. Mm -hmm. Third down and short. Play clock winding down. Down to zero. And they're not going to get the playoff. There's a mistake by Dak Prescott. That's just inexperience. Prior to the expiration of the play clock, charge timeout, Mississippi State. They flag through, but the officials grant them the timeout. So it will be on the right is the Astrodome. On the left, Reliance Stadium. If you're not from the Houston area and you're wondering if the Astrodome is still there, yes, it is still there, right next door to Reliant. The amazing thing is when they built the Astrodome, they called it the eighth wonder of the world. Now it looks like the Texans practice bubble <laughs> next door to Reliance it's Stadium. It's, it's amazing true. how this building dwarfs that one. But after the timeout, big play. Third down and short. Prescott off the play action fake. Wants the home run ball, throws it into double coverage. And it's incomplete. Jamie and Lewis seemed like he pulled up a bit on his route. He may have had a step. And well, he Dak was, Prescott overthrew him. Yeah, he was trying to find the ball. He was getting away from his guy and trying to find the ball. I don't think he pulled up as much as he was trying to locate where it was. And, and are they going to they're gonna go for this one here? I guess now with 12 and a half minutes to go, down by 18, they feel the necessity, even inside their own 35-yard wow. line, to go for it on fourth and one. Wow. This is shocking. And they'll get it. Trap hand off to Josh Robinson, moves the chains on fourth down and about a half yard. So Mississippi State didn't pick up a first down in the entire third quarter. Now they've got two on this drive to start off the fourth quarter. So now you're asking yourself, what, what can you run that will make your quarterback, Prescott, comfortable? You've got to have him get a completion or run the ball. He needs a play so that the rhythm can start to come for him. Again, the play action fake, looking for the wheel route down the sideline, and it's on time. Malcolm Johnson, the tight end, makes the catch as he beat Justin Gilbert. And that's a big gainer for Mississippi State. It is the fake run by the quarterback that gets the attention of the entire Oklahoma State defense. You see how everybody came up, including Gilbert, the corner over there? That allowed the tight end, Johnson, to get behind him. Nicely thrown ball. And a gain of 35. So the backup quarterback, Dak Prescott, with Tyler Russell knocked out for the rest of the day. Trying to see if he can breathe a little life back in the game for Mississippi State. Play clock winding down at five as he backs up in the pistol. He'll throw again. And that bullet to the outside misses Joe Morrow. It'll be second down and ten. A new era for Auburn begins as Gus Malzahn is back. And that's an interesting matchup. Two teams that are coming off a very underwhelming seasons last year. Mike Leach has a returning offensive line as a new quarterback. And then, of course, Georgia Clemson, 8 o'clock tonight in Death Valley. Number five against number eight. Prescott off the play action fake. Pump fake, looks downfield. Bullets one over the middle again. And that's well behind his intended receiver, Lewis. And incomplete, it will be third down. And 10, and Josh Robinson on the right side of the field was wide open. Let's check back in with Robert Flores. Last night up I-45 in Dallas, Baker Mayfield of Texas Tech. In his first start, the walk-on true freshman had five total touchdowns to lead Texas Tech over SMU. He's our AT&T All-America Player of the Week nominee. Tech's vote to 34763. Back to beautiful Houston, Bob. And back inside Reliant on third down and 10. Prescott runs it up the middle, and now a decision again for Mississippi State. Nope. You'd think they'd have to go for yep. it on fourth down nope. from inside the 25. No, no decision. I mean, that's why they ran that on third down. Well, here's the decision. What play do you call? Exactly. I guess that's the only decision. <laughs> not to go for it or not, you're you going. You ran that on third down because you knew you were going to go on fourth down. I mean, if you went for it on fourth down back in your own territory, you got to go for it here. But now you've got options. You can actually run it from here with the same sort of deal with Prescott, or you can throw it here. Fourth down and four. Trying to keep some hope alive for Mississippi State. Back Prescott, well protected. Finds Lewis for a first down. The second fourth down conversion on this drive. And it's first and 10 at the 12, a gain of 10. 
Good patience here by Prescott. Looks off the coverage in the middle and comes back to his receiver. Quickly, Robinson inside the 10 with a flag down to about the 7-yard line, but this is an illegal shift coming against Mississippi State. Illegal shift. Offense, number 16. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. And you don't see Oklahoma State, when they go super fast, make mistakes like that because they're used to it. Is that an indication of a group of players that is not used to running the hurry-up speed offense and getting set, and then you make a yeah, mental error? Absolutely. This is their two-minute drill in order to get back into the ball game, and they had a mistake there. They don't do it all the time. That's their 10th penalty. So now it's first and 15. Prescott steps up in the pocket. Hit as he throws. And ends up grounding the ball. James Castleman got an arm around Dak Prescott. It's second and 15. He could have taken off on that run. And I would expect for him to be more aware of it this next couple of plays that he has an opportunity when he steps up to use his legs given the defense he's facing. The folks are flying out leaving him some room so he could take off. 13th play of a drive that's taken about five minutes and there's still a lot of time on the clock but Mississippi State has to get a touchdown. There's the quarterback draw designed running play. It'll be third down and long as he barely gets inside the 15 yard line. Nice job by Calvin Barnett led the team in tackles for loss last year for Oklahoma State to bring him down and now Ladarius Perkins will check back in. Yes, you know, he seems to be more comfortable when they go to the empty formation and he's the lone back the lone quarterback there and he has a chance to survey the field or to run if he wants to. But you got two plays down here now. Top of your screen is the true freshman Deronye Wilson. A little misdirection. And now running out of bounds, shoved out by Daytuan Lowe is Ladarius Perkins. And now it's fourth down and 13, which is not a high percentage no. of success play. If you kick a field goal, I know it really hurts to come away with only three. But, you but if you the kick game. a field goal, you extend the game you and make it a two-possession game. You extend the game, and that's what you need to do now is extend the game. If you picked up five yards on that running play, you could come back and go for it. But you're right. Low percentage on fourth and 13. You kick the field goal. You extend the game. It becomes a two-possession game. And this obviously is a must-make for Devin Bell from 32 yards away. And he misses it. Well wide to the left. That is a dagger for Mississippi State. Dan Mullen just trying to extend the game. Can't even add three. At our Pacific Life game summary, and J.W. Walsh has changed the complexion of this game primarily with his running. I think the quarterback audition is over at Oklahoma State. Walsh, with his legs, I think has won that position. It was his ability to run the football, a lot of it out of the option, that really changed the complexion of this ball game. He's been the MVP, the focal point, and it's unusual to see it, but it was, an, it was with an Oklahoma State quarterback running the ball, not throwing it. Tough audition for Clint Shelf as he didn't get much of an opportunity, but with the game kind of stalled offensively when Mike Gundy went to J.W. Walsh, he was a difference maker. And he turned the game over to him. Here's Jeremy Smith. Close to the 25-yard line for a gain of four. Well, you know, Chelf was the MVP of their bowl game. And he finished the season as, as their starter. Played really well. But then the two series that he had early on, they did nothing. They picked up nothing. No first downs, no points. And then when Walsh came in, he struggled early on, but he gave them that added dimension of running the football, and that's been the difference. There's another first down run. Juking his way into the secondary is Jeremy Smith. College football primetime on ESPN, presented by Hampton Hotels. Part of Dick's Sporting Goods kickoff week kicks off with an SEC Big 12 clash. Another one tonight. Les Miles and number 12 LSU take on the 20th ranked Horn Frogs at TCU. College football primetime ESPN tonight at 9 Eastern. Also live on Watch ESPN. Don't sleep on TCU. Casey Paul Hall back at quarterback, likely. Boykin also likely to play quarterback. 
And now Mississippi State has to try and rip the ball out. There's probably no other way for them to have hope unless their defense makes a big play for them, gets a takeaway. Oklahoma State would have to make a bad mistake in order for the Bulldogs to have a chance. Second down and 12. There's a handoff to Desmond Rowland. You know, back to, to Walsh for a moment. You think about the next couple of games. You know, Gundy said he wanted to have his quarterback in place for the opener against West Virginia. Their next two games are easily winnable games. So Walsh should be their quarterback. There's not going to be anything in those games, I would think, that would open the door for Chelf again. So I think your quarterback against West Virginia in three weeks is going to be Walsh. Third down and ten. And now Oklahoma State letting the play clock wind down, milking a little more time off the game clock. J.W. Walsh quarterback draw. And he is brought down, does a nice job of staying inbounds to keep the clock rolling to its maximum. Yvonne Coleman was there to stand him up. It'll be fourth down, and Oklahoma State will punt it away. What well, is interesting, reading between the lines, it was almost as if, and Clint Shelf, according to Mike Gundy, not the best practice player. A mm -hmm. guy that plays better in games mm -hmm. than he practices during the week. And he did come in last year, kept the train on the tracks. They nicknamed him the Chelf Choo Choo as a result. And he was the MVP of the bowl game. So his attitude was with J.W. Walsh that J.W. Walsh had to really take the job away from Clint Shelf and gave him the opportunity to do that today. Hard to believe that Jamie and Lewis would not call for a fair catch there and did not pay the price. We'll step aside, come back in a moment after a 38-yard punt. A big lead for Oklahoma State. You're watching college. Huh. A little disappointing. They've been a team that's knocked on the door. They certainly have the talent. You knocked wonder if this, door. this building is going to maybe have the door knocked down. Oh. <laughs> Bum Phillips and the Houston Oilers. That was their deal, huh? Tired of knocking on the door. Tired of knocking gonna on knock the door. Down, huh? <laughs> First and ten for Dak Prescott. And Mississippi State's 23-yard line. Now he's going to try and take some shots downfield, and that one floats out of bounds, intended for Ronye Wilson, who's a wide receiver that the Bulldogs have a lot of hope for. If a true freshman who was Alabama Mr. Basketball. Yeah, yeah. He only played one year of high school football. Yeah. He concentrated on being a basketball player, and who knows, maybe he might get on the court for Mississippi State. He's a good-looking athlete. There's no doubt about that. But if Mississippi State wants to look at one area as to why they struggled today, one for 13 on third down. That, uh, that not only hurts the offense, it hurts the defense. Prescott under pressure. Sacked. Inside the 15-yard line. Emmanuel Ogba got there for the Cowboys. Uh, it, it's been pressure pretty much all afternoon that's been a problem. There's just a stunt bringing the linebacker Levy from the middle of the field to the right side. He comes free and gets the sack, and they have not picked up many blitzes all night long. That's the third sack for Oklahoma State. And we talked about this being one of those table setter opportunities for both of these programs. Well, for a Cowboy team ranked 13th in the poll. And they seem to be, in most prognosticators' minds, the favorite of the Big 12, although you're certainly going to get some delay folks that game. think, as now Offense. a delay penalty called against Josh Mississippi Kennedy. State. Still third down. Some folks still think the Big 12 goes well, through Norman. Well, maybe, or maybe through Texas, maybe. or maybe through Stillwater. I mean, if this Oklahoma State defense plays like this, plays this physically, I think you're going to be hard-pressed to find another defense in the Big 12 outside of maybe TCUs that can match them. And the way that the Big 12 has gone over the past several years, if you run the table in the Big 12, you have every right to claim that you deserve a chance to play for the national championship. Prescott into traffic, and he hits Robert Johnson. Now to about the 30-yard line, still three yards shot of the first down. About that point, the right to play for the national championship, that goes back to why you schedule games like this. Right. When Oklahoma State did not get to the championship two years ago, their non-conference schedule was a little bit weak. They didn't play an SEC team. 
now when you look at this schedule, if they handle the Big 12 and they have, oh, Mississippi State in here, you start to look at it and go, okay, well, maybe they are championship worthy. They get UT, uh, UTSA, Lamar, and then the conference begins with West Virginia. And you got tough teams with TCU. Uh, who knows about Kansas State now after the way they lost the other night. But Texas, Baylor, Oklahoma, the end of the year, right. that's the real challenge. Yeah, this could be an undefeated Oklahoma State team very realistically with those three games at the yeah. end of the season. You've got to go to Austin, but you host Bedlam this year and last year they went toe to toe with Oklahoma and lost an overtime in Norman but they'll get that game at home this but year. think about the numbers and where they sit they're 13 now they have a chance to get into the top 10 and if they have those three games at the end they could be in the hunt after the timeout a deflected ball on fourth down still finds its way to Jamie and Lewis so Mississippi State gets a fourth down conversion you know what I mean I mean if you're undefeated you're gonna you're gonna climb in the polls from 13 to inside the top 10, and if you knock off ranked teams at the end of the year, they'll be in the discussion. Another catch made by Lewis, but that's shy of the first down, so that keeps the clock rolling with 3:53 to go. And what about Mississippi State? A loss like this to open the season, what's that do for you? Well, the good news for Mississippi State, I don't know if it's good news, is that if you turn around and win games in the SEC, you have the chance to erase a loss like this pretty quickly. I mean, the fact that it happens early in the season, we have seen teams rebound from that. But this was an eye-opener today in terms of how much it looks like they might struggle offensively. Yeah. Cut back for Derek Milton, and he picks up only two or three. And we talked about Jad Bumpus has moved on to the NFL, that... Dan Mullen said they basically lost every productive yard last year from a receiver standpoint and you lose Bumpus who was Tyler Russell's favorite target this group might get better and better as they mature during they, the season they but have they have to find they have no experience they got to find a way to throw the ball that's the long and short of it Prescott will throw here buying time now it's a schoolyard play Prescott across his body into traffic, tipped around, and incomplete at the five. Tyler Patman was there to knock it away as we take a look back at today's good hands play. Brought to you by Allstate, and it's the turnover. Justin Gilbert back in the first quarter. Tremendous one-handed pick. Stayed inbounds. It, the play was re reviewed upstairs. Allowed to stand in the pick. And that stopped an early Mississippi State drive. 2.45 to go, third down and eight. Josh Robinson gets to the sideline, picks up the first down, stood up at the 30 yard line. You know what Dan Mullen did wrong as a coach at Mississippi State? Won nine games his second year. You win nine games your second year, then everybody expects you to go better than that each year after that. That ball's dropped by Fred Ross. Well, he mentioned that to us when we talked to him earlier this week because I asked him about playing in this game. You know, you risk going into a tough game against a top 15 team, and if you lose it, I mean, you play in the SEC. You play enough top 15 teams. You play a host of top 10 teams. Do you need this game? Yeah. And he said, you know what? Our program that. is now in a spot where... I'm honored that we're asked yeah. to play in a game yeah, like this. Yeah, I agree with them. You have to play. And, and going forward with the playoff, it's not going to be enough for SEC teams to say, we only play our own. You're right. going to have to step out and play others. Coming back to make the catch is Fred Ross, but it'll still be third down, or Malcolm Johnson, pardon me. It'll be third down and long. You, you have to challenge yourself. And I think going forward, you have to say to the committee that's going to pick the playoff next year, hey, we want to be considered. We think we're good enough, and we're proving it by going out and playing up. So whether you're in the SEC or elsewhere, you're going to have to schedule games like this and play up. Third down and 10. Prescott, high throw. Tipped around and intercepted on the deflection. Zach Craig takes a knee, and that gives the ball back to Oklahoma State, and they can simply now offensively take a knee. Unless Mississippi State spends their last time out, that will end the game.
Uh, Prescott simply gets this ball in there a little bit high. Johnson can't hang on to it. Nothing but your tip drill. Zach Craig right there, and now it's time for Oklahoma State's offense to salt this one away. And this has been a really tough, tough-nosed, hard, physical performance by Oklahoma State. The kind of performance that a lot of folks didn't think they could provide. And they earned this win. As ugly as it was offensively in the first half, their defense hung in there. Yeah. They were down 3 nothing for the majority of the first half. As Jeremy Smith goes up the middle, and with only two races left until the chase for the cup, Jimmy Johnson looks to maintain his lead on the field as the competition heats up at the Atlanta Motor Speedway. The NASCAR Sprint Cup Series at Atlanta. Sunday at 7 on ESPN, also live on Watch ESPN. And it is interesting, the point that you make about the fact that this is the last year of the BCS. Next year, we're going to be doing during the football season what we often spend the second half of the college basketball season doing. We'll be putting up resumes right. for exactly. teams, yeah. looking at out-of-conference wins and strength of schedule, wins against the top 10, against the top 20, against the top 50, and how those rankings will then determine what might happen in that committee room. And you know who wins? The fans. I mean, it's great for the fans to have games like this in September as opposed to cupcake games. I mean, can you imagine how you feel when you have your season tickets and you go, oh, I'm spending all this money to go watch a 90 to nothing ball game. Really? It doesn't work for me. Especially in college football when you yeah. only get seven home games usually. Yeah. So those seven Saturdays are pretty special. It is nice when you get games that seem to just mean more. And what ought to be the last play for the Cowboys. And J.W. Walsh into the secondary, slides down. And that will end this one in style for Oklahoma State. Talk about cupcake games here. Georgia Tech, they beat the lawn today, 70 to nothing. So the Advocare Texas kickoff belongs to Oklahoma State. The final seconds tick down. And Mike Gundy who was not thrilled about playing a neutral site game against an SEC team, gets a terrific early season win in convincing fashion. His defense kept his team when his offense was struggling in the game in the first half. Mississippi State had multiple chances to sway the momentum big time in their favor, but the Oklahoma State defense wouldn't let them do it, even though from a yardage standpoint, time of possession standpoint, things look to be tilted towards Mississippi State. Dan Mullen's team never extended a 3-0 lead. I think this was a good test for Oklahoma State.